Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. This is a Tuesday at about 8.30 in the morning. I apologize for not uh, uh, sending a devotional yesterday. I, I tried to do it. Technological uh, problems kept me from doing so, but this morning we're trying a different way to do this. Um, but for this morning, I wanted to, to do a little bit of a devotional for us. And the, the, the promise is that I'll be doing it basically daily, um, probably Monday through Friday and then uh, Sunday morning worship services. And these will all be on the website. I'll try to get uh, them on Facebook if we can. We can work that out. Um, and we'll try to just keep uh, keep doing those kinds of things. Um, this morning we have uh, a little bit of information to give uh, to you. We, uh, right now the Administrative Council is uh, in discussions about uh, closing services for this coming Sunday. That's my assumption that that will happen um, the bishop has uh, sent out a communication uh, requesting that we cooperate with the, the shutdowns. And so um, we will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. I'm not sure how long this thing will last. Um, so we're, that's one of the things that we'll be uh, cooperating with. Um, also, we want to talk about, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, that we're working right now on a, a prayer box that will go in the parking lot of the church. Um, we're going to actually have uh, Emma, Emma, my daughter, is uh, painting it this morning. Uh, Ron Ostel, uh, one of our trustees, uh, made the box. It's on a cross. You'll see it as you drive by the church. It's a, It's got a place for you to uh, drive up to it, a slot, and then uh, you can put a prayer, requ prayer request in the slot and we'll be checking that, those, uh, that box on a regular basis and we'll be praying for you. Uh, that Hopefully that uh, box will also be recognized and open for the community as well for them, uh, for people who are not members of the church or, or even attending the church. Whoever needs prayer to, to come by and, and it'll hopefully be a welcome site for people to put their prayer requests in as well. So that's one of the things we hope to do, one of the changes we're, we're making. There, there'll be various other ones. I'll, during these devotional times, I'll be talking about some of the things that are happening, some of the things that we want to get started. Um, but uh, for now, we wanted to, I wanted to just to say a prayer over the Word of God. and uh, Hopefully you've got your cup of coffee and maybe your Bible in front of you and you can kind of read along, follow along with what I'm doing in these devotionals. Let's bow our heads together. Father, I just thank you for us as we uh, bow our heads together and just open your Word. I pray that there would be a sense of your Spirit among us as we uh, read these sacred words together. Give us your grace and Help us to uh, continue to navigate these difficult times, uh, these strange times, really. Father, we uh, know that you have everything in control. You are a sovereign God, and you, you have the whole world and the whole situation in your hands. We pray uh, your grace as we look at your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, one of the first things I wanted to do in devotionals was talk, uh, I wanted to talk about peace. It just, I was reading scripture in John the other night, and um, was Jesus was talking about, uh, it was the, toward the end when he was just ready to go to crucifixion. And the amazing thing, and you can look at it yourself, uh, about John's gospel, just the way he orders it, um, is that Jesus comforts his disciples right before he goes uh, to crucifixion. So here's Jesus heading for uh, one of the most difficult times, the most difficult time of, of his life on the cross. Uh, so difficult that uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane he sweat as great drops of blood. Uh, we know that pressure that was on him. And he, in that context, in that uh, stress-filled, uh, pressure-filled context, he turns to his disciples and he comforts them. And one of the things he says to them is, my peace I give to you. And so he, he knew that we are a people, we are creatures uh, who fret. Now, I'm a fretter. I'm, I, I've been a fretter all my life. I worry. I look ahead and I worry about what might happen for my children, my family, my church, all those kinds of things. I'm, I'm, I just naturally fret. Um, and I think people do. Um, so Jesus sees us on us and he says, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you my peace. And so um, the peace of God comes to us. And when it does, it overwhelms our situation. There's a lot of fear um, over the coronavirus uh, that, that the people just don't know what's happening. And even the professionals uh, on television are, are saying they think they know what's happening. 
the government says they think they know what's happening. Um, but really, nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen in a week or two weeks or four months. And so it's, we're living in an uncertain time, um, <clears throat> literally an uncertain time. And so we need the peace of God. Our peace only goes so far, and we get stressed out and stretched. And um, we need God's peace in times like this. So Jesus comes to us and says, I'll give you my peace. And it's God's peace given to us. And there's two things I want to say, and I'll say one to today and maybe one tomorrow, about God's peace. And the first thing that I wanted to say about God's peace is um, that it is strong. It's a strong peace. Um, actually, I would use the word perfect. It is a perfect peace that we have from God. And um, this, uh, this comes out of a verse that, uh, one of the first verses I read from the Bible as a, as a Christian um, when I first became a Christian, my brother Tom um, gave me a Bible and um, so that I could read read the Bible. And I, he said to read the Gospel of John and start through and that kind of thing. And so I was reading the Bible. But he gave me also this little book, bookmark. And this bookmark that he gave me had the verse on it, Isaiah from Isaiah chapter 26, uh, verse uh, 3. And um, it's, it was the King James Version. And if it wasn't for that bookmark in that book, Bible, I probably would have never noticed this. I probably would have read over this verse uh, all of my life. But because of that bookmark, this became a very special verse to me. And um, basically, the verse from Isaiah chapter 26, uh, verse 3, and that's if you want to ref ref reference that in your Bible, it's a good, it's a good memory verse, actually. Um, the King James says it like this, Thou wilt keep him, <clears throat> thou wilt keep him or her, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. And um, what Isaiah the prophet is saying, basically, is that when a person uh, puts his mind, stays his mind on God, the author and creator of the universe, the omnipotent, omniscient, all-present God, this God who has everything in control, uh, Nothing frightens God. I was watching a horror movie with uh, Emma uh, the other night, and we have a lot of, you know, we're, Emma's staying home, so we've got more family time. So we were watching this horror movie. And I was just thinking about fear, and I, I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of things that scare us, but nothing scares God. There's nothing more powerful than God. Nothing's going to scare God. And so uh, if we stay our minds on our Father, who loves us very much, our Creator, who is powerful, then that brings a peace to us. And Isaiah puts it like this. He says, for the person who fixes, stays his mind on God, who focuses on God on a constant basis, there, there is a peace that comes from that. And so there's a lot of things that we can be distracted by in the world today. There's a lot of fears that uh, could catch our attention uh, today uh, that really could paralyze us with fear. But if we will take the advice of the prophet and fix our minds on God, look above uh, the situations that we're facing as we lift our eyes uh, to God, then that will bring a peace to us in our situation. And my prayer for you is, is this peace. So let's bow our heads together. Father, we just thank you for your word and the promises that come to us from the, the truth of Scripture, promises that are more solid, more a better foundation than anything around us. While the world around us, the song says, while the world around us is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I will stand. So my prayer for my brothers and sisters who are watching this clip uh, now, that you would give them this peace as they lift their eyes just above their situations to fix their eyes, to stay their mind on you. And this is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyway, God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll be back uh, tomorrow to talk more about the Word of God. God bless you, Chapel Hill.